Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is your pastor and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode in my Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Um, and in this series, we're looking at anything anything related to VDI Cloud, really, for Microsoft. And it's th that includes three main solutions, which is uh, DevBox, which is the current topic we're looking at, um, Windows 365 and AVD as your virtual desktop. So as I mentioned, we're on the dead box topic. We're coming towards the end of that now. This is, we've got two more episodes. Uh, this is episode 11, so the penultimate episode. Um, and we're just going to finish off that uh, sort of our back topic, and then we're going to do a final uh, video to finish off and just round off and summarize the whole topic. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is the Microsoft Cloud VDI series, as I mentioned, um, and this is part four of the our back. Uh, for Microsoft DevBox, and today we're going to talk about Dev Center, resource groups, and project structure. So the structure of those three things, then catalog structure, and finally we we'll finish off the demo. Let's we'll finish off our deployment, and that's it. Um, we'll go actually, the DevBox has been deployed. If you remember the last episode, and then I'll show you as a developer how you can manage that, and how you can sort of log in on that whole user experience piece. <clears throat> so let's talk about Dev Center, resource groups, and, and projects from a structural perspective. Um, your organization should really invest time up front to plan on the, the sort of placement of your dev center and that sort of structure of your resource group and your projects if you've got an existing azure tenancy um that already follows the the cloud adoption framework so you've got landing zones etc and you've got all that you know the hub and spoke networking you know you follow the well architected framework and stuff like that you're already in a good space really so uh really then you'd put your you you'd put your dev box into a, the dev box solution into its own landing zone, right? And that would have its own resource group, et cetera, et cetera. But again, if you're not in that space and, and you, 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 you're you still quite um, new to the Azure sort of structure um, and you, you've not really got that in place, then you just need to plan and organize and understand where you want your dev center to sit, right? Um, you can organize dev centers by the set of projects you would like to manage together, apply similar settings and provide similar templates. Organizations can use one or more dev center if they want. You know, typically each sub organization within the organization has its own dev center. You might consider creating multiple dev centers if you have, you know, certain cases. For example, if you want specific configurations to be available to a subset of projects, or if different teams need to own and maintain the dev center resources in Azure. Um, so there are there are cases where you need multiple dev centers. Let's talk a little bit about the projects now. So. Uh, projects are associated with each dev team or group or people working or for you know on that one app or product as i think i've mentioned i've explained that already in this uh, in this series planning again is key it's very important when you assign roles to resource groups because it also applies permissions to all the resources in that resource group right including dev centers network connections dev definitions dev box pools and projects to ensure that users are only granted to the appropriate resources you can create resource groups that contain dev box resources Orderly. You can organize projects according to the DevBox definition and DevBox pools required and the developers who should access them. It's important to note that DevBox pools determine the location of the DevBox creation. So developers should create DevBoxes in location close to them or, or you know, that's for the least latency. And that's the same as AVD, right? It's the same principles as AVD. So we're no different there, okay? Let's talk a little bit about catalog structure now before we're going to jump into the demo. So Microsoft DevBox uses catalogs to ensure developers uh, you know, allows them to enables them to deploy customizations for DevBoxes by using a catalog of tasks and a configuration file to install software, add extensions, clone rep repositories, and, and much more. Microsoft DevBox stores catalogs in either GitHub repositories or in Azure DevOps serv uh, service repository. Again, depends on what your user as an organization. You can attach a catalog to a dev center or to a project. You can attach one or more catalogs to your dev center as well and manage all customizations at that level. To provide more sort of granularity in how developers and, uh, access customizations, you can attach catalogs to the project level as well. Uh, and again, in that planning, you know, make sure you plan where to attach your catalogs. You, know, you need to consider um, each different, you know, the needs of each different developer team. Okay. So right, let's move into a demo. This is the last demo of this uh, topic, DevBots. We're not going to have one in the last episode. Uh, if we want to kind of summarize and then just talk about a few more items, um, talk a bit about the roadmap as well. But we're going to finish off and show you that sort of DevBox experience and how you as a developer can manage your DevBox. So come join me in the demo. So 
here we are in the demo portal now when you've when you've provisioned your dev box and when it's ready and i said it can take up to 20 30 minutes depending on depending on azure really because <laughs> it is provisioning that those resources for the first time remember so this is a screen you'll get you'll go, welcome you know i've got welcome shabazz i'm the developer you've got some quick actions you can you can download and set up remote desktop um, so this is the web version by the way um it is available in the web app uh, the, the uh, microsoft windows app which i'll show you in a second but here we have our dev box here so here's where we can actually uh, it's, it's a sort of stop state because i i stopped it myself so here if you click on those three little dots there i can actually start it you can actually start it you can delete it you can troubleshoot and repair you can call support well not call them but you can contact support if you've got access to do that if you've got the right role based access control we saw that in the in a couple of episodes ago um, and here all i want to do is click start because i want to start it up now because i want to log into it right um and then once you've kind of logged into it um, i'll show you the logon process shortly once that's started um as i mentioned we can also uh we can also access this through the um windows app as well so let me quickly show you that so here's a windows app um and we showed this right at the start in this sort of intro episode that i can go back to see that if you want um but here you can see i've got my my avd there um but also here i've got my cloud pc so there's my shav's dev box see um so again, you can just showing again that I spoke about this in that first episode. The Windows app is there for all your Microsoft Cloud VDI services, right? We can we can provision cloud, we can access cloud PC, and when I do the when we do the Windows 365, we'll be able to access that through here as well. But also, I've got my AVD there as well if I want to access that. Um, but for now, because I'm kind of showing the the web web sort of inter interface, let's jump back into the web interface. So I can show you the logon process. So we can see here it's running now. So essentially to, to log in, we've just got to open in browser. It'll open another browser window. It's loading that, that web client and here. We've got our session settings here so we can select anything we want passing through. We've got advanced settings there. If you want alternate keyboard layer or you want to enable high DPI, um, click to not show again, then just click connect. And that is going to now connect to us, going to open the remote port. Just go through that logon process. Um, if you've not got single sign on setup, which I don't believe I have for this instance, um, you will just need to go through this process of uh, signing in again. Um, you might get a little pop up. Uh, and again, you might get pop ups to allow um, certain features and like your, like your, your, your Logitech, like I've got my Logitech camera. Um, you know, any cameras or any audio equipment that you have, you have to allow those to be accessed. Um, And this is going to slowly log on now. Not slowly, but it's going to log on. It's log on for the first time, remember. So let's get rid of any pop ups. We've got our keyboard here as well. So here we can see um, we've logged in now and we've got that whole uh, web interface experience. So we can click around our dev boxes. We'll just work as a developer now. We can work. Um, and again, here we we'll go back here we can uh, the same way we would on abd or, or windows 365 we can go here and sign out we can disconnect etc and um, we can apply obviously as we know we can apply the different uh, policies from mdm in tune if we want um okay so that's disconnected we can close that and again from here we can simply shut down restart or stop the device as well so let's just shut it down there um and that's kind of what i want to show as a developer how you are able to use DevBox, are you able to manage it yourself? Remember that you you have the administrative access to that your specific DevBox, right? If you have multiple DevBoxes, you'll be able to see those there as well. Um, so that's kind of what I want to show. But that's the last demo of this uh, of this sort of topic. Um, we're going to be going through some roadmap items in the next episode. Uh, hopefully everyone's enjoying the series you know please do leave me a comment you know drop me a like and make sure you subscribe hit that subscribe button uh, i do appreciate everyone's uh, you know everyone's uh, support we're, we're moving along nicely into that 20 20 you know mid 20s k subscribers at the moment I, I, I think by the time this video is published i won't have done my giveaway yet so plenty make sure you sign up i'll put the link to the to the form in the description uh, so thank you everybody for watching until next time goodbye